Top 10 Amazing Facts About Harvard University Colleges and universities are institutions of prestige and intellect, but for a few of them, their roots reach deep into the history of our country. This is the case of America's oldest university, Harvard. Established in 1636, before America was even a country, Harvard is one of the most well-known and admired higher learning institutions, not just in the country, but in the world. With all of these titles comes an amazing history of its own. Welcome to Previlicious, and today we will be going through our list of 10 amazing facts about Harvard University. If this is your first time to the channel, then welcome. Be sure to subscribe while you're here. Also, as we are coming out with new videos regularly, be sure to hit the notification bell. That way, you stay up to date with our newest releases. With that being said, let's get into it. Number 10. Harvard has a history of high achievers. Anytime you hear that someone had an education from Harvard University, it brings about huge feelings of respect. They could be one of the next great minds of our generation. After all, Harvard has produced 49 Nobel laureates, 32 heads of state, and 48 Pulitzer Prize winners since it was first established. Its first notable student was the second president of the United States, John Adams. By 2010, Harvard has educated seven U.S. presidents. As the years progress and more students funnel through the school, it will be amazing to see exactly what sort of world leaders and influencers they will produce. Number 9. The university is like its own city. Nowadays, universities are comprised of multiple campuses and numerous buildings. They are like small towns to themselves. When Harvard was first started, it was a single-frame house and a college yard. But today, it has grown to resemble something like a city. Now, their real estate holdings alone total 5,457 acres of land, which is over 4,000 football fields. The crazy thing is that of the total land owned, the main university campus sits on only 3%. Much of the rest of the land is leased, making it yet another source of income for the school. The rest is used for various other purposes of the school. Number 8. Widener Library is humongous. You would expect a university as big and as old as Harvard to have a serious collection of books. It's definitely true. What you may not realize is exactly how massive it is. Harvard boasts the oldest collection of books in the country. There are 79 libraries in total, and the largest is known as the Widener Memorial Library. It is home to 3.5 million books in over 100 languages, and over 57 miles of shelves. The only other library in the United States that is larger than the one at Harvard is the Library of Congress, which is nearly double the size of Widener Library. Number 7. Harvard tried banning football twice. Part of being enrolled at such a prestigious university is studying almost non-stop. But when you study that much, you also need time to play a bit as well. Harvard has been known for having one of the best athletic programs. However, there was a time Harvard tried to ban football at the university, twice. They believed that the violent and dangerous characteristics of the sport were not best for the school. But after pressure from student and alumni, the football program was allowed to stay. Today, the Harvard football program remains one of the most competitive programs in the country. Number 6. Women were not always allowed to attend Harvard Today, Harvard prides itself on gender equality, as well as being an advocate for LGBTQ rights. But it wasn't always that way. Until 1999, Radcliffe College, now the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study, was essentially the all-female counterpart to Harvard courses. At one point, joint diplomas were offered between the two universities, and a merger started in 1977. This allowed Radcliffe students to take Harvard classes, but didn't offer those women an official Harvard degree. Fortunately, the practice is not in place today as Harvard. As a matter of fact, the female demographic makes up about 49% of the total student body. Number 5. An on-campus murder inspired the creation of the forensics department. There is a famous murder case known as the Parkman-Webster murder case. Parkman, a high-profile businessman and Harvard alum, lent money to Webster, a Harvard professor. Parkman visited Webster to confront him about the repayment and ended up burnt and dismembered in Webster's laboratory. 
The ensuing trial was a milestone for the U.S. legal system and was reportedly the first case in U.S. history where forensic anthropology had been used to prosecute the murderer. Now, Harvard University runs one of the best forensic investigation programs in the world, leading the way in numerous industry-changing studies. Number 4. Harvard has an awesome football stadium. The famous U-shaped football stadium of Harvard University is located right across the river in the Alston neighborhood of Boston. It is the nation's oldest stadium, built in 1903, and resembles bits of Greek and Roman architecture. It holds over 30,000 fans and has become a multi-use arena. The field also hosts the school's track and field, rugby, lacrosse, and even ice hockey teams. There is no doubt that once a person sets their eyes on it, they will know that it belongs to a school that is just as grand. Number 3. You have less than a 5% chance of getting in. We all know how hard it is to be a student with great grades. In all honesty, the odds are pretty low that it will happen. That's nothing when compared to the odds of winning the lottery. So, what are the odds of being a top of your class student and winning the lottery at the same time? Your odds are about as high as getting into Harvard. Each year, Harvard University gets thousands of applications from students all over the world. However, only 6% of them are accepted. There has even been a rumor that some students who score perfectly on SATs and ACTs have been denied admission. On one hand, it seems incredibly unfair to deny some of the brightest students in the world for the best education in the world. On the other hand, though, it adds to the exclusivity of the institution. Number 2. You have no idea how rich the university is. Assumptions about Harvard University are the same as the assumptions of pretty much any Ivy League school. It has a rich and influential alumni. Not to mention it costs around $52,000 per year to attend. So it's safe to say they have money. But how much exactly? Harvard University has the largest academic endowment in the world, totaling to about 37.6 billion US dollars. While the last couple of years has definitely seen the university take some financial hits, the university still remains at the top in the world. The next two highest earning universities are Yale University and the University of Texas. Number 1. There are three lies concerning the Harvard statue. The statue of John Harvard is quite possibly the most recognizable landmark at Harvard University, as it honors the founder of the school. Many universities have something similar honoring their heritage as well, but this particular statue has an odd nickname. It is often called the Statue of Three Lies. Embarrassingly enough, this statue actually has some major errors in it. Firstly, John Harvard was technically the main benefactor of the college, donating funds to begin the university, which is why the school carries his name today. But the statue labels him as the founder of the school, which he was not. He simply donated a large portion of money. Secondly, there was a bit of an error in dates. The statue reads that Harvard University was founded in 1638. Unfortunately, they were a couple of years off. The school actually opened its doors in 1636, two years earlier than what it was listed on the statue. The final mistake is the biggest and most embarrassing. The statue doesn't even depict John Harvard. That's right, whoever built the statue didn't even make it to resemble the man they falsely stated started the school. The sculpture actually depicts a student by the name of Sherman Hoare, quite a far cry from John Harvard. Do you agree with our list? What are some of the amazing things that you know about Harvard University? Be sure to let us know in the comments section below. Also, for more great random facts, don't forget to check out some of our previous videos. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.